Hi everyone, I'm going to be installing the latest version of Ubuntu LTS on a separate drive with a separate EFI partition. By default, in the Ubuntu installer, it will install the bootloader information on your first drive, even if you specify in the installer to use the other drive. So this will be an issue as Windows is known for deleting anything on the EFI partition that is not related to Windows, which will then have you run into boot issues. So I will be showing you how to install Ubuntu on a separate drive with a separate EFI partition using Grub to avoid this. First, I'm going to go into Disk Management. And I have here my main drive. It's 128 gigabytes. The C drive is here. Here's the EFI partition. And then this is the separate drive. It's 50 gigabytes in size. This is where I'm going to be installing Ubuntu onto. And then here's my USB drive where I'm going to be putting the Ubuntu ISO onto. So to download Ubuntu, go to ubuntu.com, go to download, and then get Ubuntu Desktop, and then download Ubuntu LTS, and download it. And then also as well as download Rufus. So go to rufus.ie, and scroll down. I downloaded the portable version. And so I've already downloaded both files. And so I'm going to start up Rufus. And it's selected my USB drive. I'm going to pick the ISO. And then you can leave the rest as defaults. And then you can hit Start. And then you can use the ISO mode. And here this window says that a download's required because it's using a specific version of Grub for Ubuntu. So you can just hit Yes. And here it's just confirming to write everything onto the USB drive. So I'm going to hit OK. And once you're done, you're going to reboot and boot into your USB drive, which has Ubuntu. So I'm going to pick Try or Install Ubuntu, and we're going to open up a terminal, Control-Alt plus T. And we're going to sudo in, and we're going to do an F disk to list the disks. And we scroll up here, so the first disk is dev sta, so my 128 gig drive, and then it has Windows as we can see here. And then the second disk is dev sdb, which is 50 gigabytes. And the first thing we'll need to do is to make some changes on the EFI partition here on the first disk. So I'm going to go into parted, which is partition editor, and then dev sda, and then type in p for print. And then so there's the boot flag. So we're going to remove that. And then we're going to re-add it back in after the install. So to remove it, we're going to type in set, and then the partition number, which is 1, and then flag is boot, and then the state is off. So set 1, boot, off. And then we type in P for print again, and then we see that the flags are no longer there. And then once done, you can hit Q to quit, and you can close the terminal, and we can go back to the install. Install Ubuntu, continue. I'll do a normal installation. And I'll download updates while installing Ubuntu. And I'll install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. And you'll see here that it says this computer currently has no detected operating systems, which of course is not true. And that's because we removed the flags earlier. So I'll go over both of these options, erase disk and then install Ubuntu and something else. If you want to just erase the disk and install Ubuntu, just select that, go to continue. And then make sure that you select your drive. So in my case, it's going to be the second drive here, SDB, and then 53.7 gigabytes. And I'll hit Install Now. And if you want to customize your partitions, you can go to something else, hit Continue, and then pick slash dev slash SDB. So that's my separate drive here. And then we're going to go to Free Space, and add a partition. So this is going to be the EFI partition. I'll put 512 megabytes. And we have 12 gigs for swap. And I'll use the remainder for root. All right, and the device for bootloader installation. So make sure it's your separate drive here. And then hit Install Now. And it's going to be creating three partitions, ESP, swap, and ext4 time zone. Put in your name, computer name, and username. And you can just click on the arrow, and it will pop up a terminal to see the current progress. All right, installation is complete, and I'm going to restart. All right, so it's booted up. And if you're familiar with Linux, you will notice that there was no Grub menu beforehand and no Windows options seen. So we're going to fix all of that. 
I'm going to log in. I'm going to open up a terminal. Now I'm going to sudo and I'm going to go back into parted for dev sda, which is the primary drive, the first drive, and hit P. So we're going to put back the boot flag on the EFI system partition. So the command is set and then the partition number and then the flag is boot and then on. And then we hit P again and then we see that the boot flag is back with the ESP flag as well. I'm going to hit Q. The next thing I'm going to do is we're going to edit the default grub file. So VI Etsy default grub. And we're going to go to the bottom and we're going to add in grub disable OS prober equals false. And we're going to hit control X, save, yes, and then enter. And so this will probe or look for other operating systems. So this will be able to find Windows. And then we're going to type in OS Prober. So we can see here that it is able to find the Windows Boot Manager. And now we're going to go and create a grub configuration. So grub dash MK config space dash O boot grub grub.cfg. So it's found the Linux images. And it's also as well as found the Windows Boot Manager. And we can confirm that the bootloader information was installed on the separate drive. You can just type in df. And we can see here that slash dev slash sdb1 is where the bootloader information is stored. So we can see here that Ubuntu is there. And then so it's not installed on your first drive or your primary drive. And now I'm going to restart. All right, so we see Grub come up and there's Ubuntu and the Windows Boot Manager. So I'm gonna go into Windows. All right, so it's in Windows here. So that's it. That's how you can dual boot with Windows by installing Ubuntu on a separate drive with a separate EFI partition. I hope this was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.